All righty. Welcome everyone to the Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution. We'll be around for the entire session to answer your questions. My name is Chelsea and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions at any time. This is one of many sessions happening, so if you're able to see them or if you wanted to watch them again, the presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com alpha. And now I'm going to be posting a link in the chat before we begin, uh, which has information on the KEL scholarship and prize drawing that happens later today. Uh, only those that attend the fair are eligible, uh, so we encourage you to click the link and participate. All right, and at this point, I'm going to turn it over to our first institution, that is North Carolina State University. Hello, everyone. How are we doing today? I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can go ahead and get started. Perfect. Of course, hello. I am Kyla Talmadge. I'm an admissions counselor with NC State University. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a quick synopsis of who we are and what we do as a university, as well as kind of go through that application process. But of course, first, we're going to start with who we are. NC State is the largest public institution in the state of North Carolina. We do have about 36,000 students in total, but only about 25,000 of those are going to be your undergraduate students. Now, our campus is located in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is the capital of this state. And our location provides us with so many different opportunities as all of our campuses are less than a mile away from downtown Raleigh. Now on the professional side, students have so much access to various companies downtown, such as IBM, Cisco, Red Hat, and so many different other ones that are consistently looking for our students for not just jobs, but also things like internships and co-ops while they're still in their undergraduate degrees. And on that social side, Raleigh also offers so many different things like a variety of concert venues, there's different parks, museums, and art galleries. So downtown Raleigh as a whole is just an amazing place for our students to go ahead and hang out, especially once they get some time to go off campus for a little bit. Now, as a campus community, research is very inherent, a very large part of who we are, as we're only one of only two public institutions in the state that actually offer undergraduate research to every single one of our undergraduate students. Now, if you can see here on the screen, since research is such a big thing, actually since 2019, we've had over $373 million that have been spent to sponsor research on our university's campus. Of course, if you want a little bit more of that fun side, we do also have over 700 different student organizations across our campus. So every single student can really find their place within the larger campus community. Oh, we are such a large university. We do actually offer so many different ways for students to be able to find that place. Now we have different things like student organization fairs, we have athletic clubs, student leadership organizations, and that's just to name a few. Now, as far as that off-campus involvement though, we do also offer study abroad programs. We do actually have over 230 different study abroad programs, but our most popular one is actually going to be in Prague in the Czech Republic, as NC State has our European center there, which is basically just a satellite campus of NC State over there in Prague in the Czech Republic, you could take the exact same courses you're taking here on campus, just abroad for that either summer, semester, the whole year, or maybe even just a couple of weeks as all of our programs are super, super flexible. Now moving on to our academic side though, if you don't know anything about NC State yet, that one thing you're gonna remember is gonna be that think and do mindset. That is our motto at NC State because it's very inherent across all of our programs. We do offer over 100 different majors and over 100 different minors, and they stem over across 10 different academic colleges at NC State. Now here on the screen, you can see our top five most popular academic programs. We are a very STEM-based institution. About 57% of our programs are going to be STEM-related, but we offer so many different majors across the board. One of the ones here on the screen I wanna talk about a little bit more is gonna be that exploratory studies option. Now that it is technically our undecided pathway here at State, we just don't like to call it that because this is an advising intensive program where you get to come in and take a course with your advisor and make sure that all of your interests and your passions are really going to go ahead and mesh with whatever major you choose. So you get to come in and explore up to all 100 majors we have to offer and officially make your decision at the end of that first year. 
As you can see at the bottom though, you will actually go ahead and select a first and a second choice major on your application because we're gonna go ahead and admit you directly into your program, which allows you to start taking that major specific coursework your very first semester on campus. Now, of course, in order to go ahead and apply, you're gonna to wanna to have to know the application deadlines. Of course, we did have that early action deadline, which was on November 1st, which just passed by. So if we do have anyone on the call that actually did apply by our early action deadline, I do wanna make a reminder that you actually have until November 15th to get in any final materials you want to make sure are reviewed with your application. So go ahead and keep that in mind. And if you did apply by that first deadline, you will receive your decision on January 30th. If not, we still have that regular decision deadline of January 15th and you'll get your decision on March 30th. But either way, both of our decisions are non-binding. So you'll have all the way until May 1st to go ahead and confirm your enrollment with us and let us know if you're officially joining the Wolfpack family or not. And one last thing I really wanna go over super quickly is of course, what makes a complete application. Now you have a couple different options to go ahead and complete it throughout the comment or coalition app. And then we do have an $85 application fee. But if you qualify for a fee waiver, just go ahead and talk to your high school counselor and they'll send it over to us. They'll also send over your official transcripts for the review process. And then the very last portion is gonna be any test scores. Now we're gonna be test optional for this year and next year, but it's totally up to you if you decide to submit those scores to us. It does not hurt your application at all if you do not decide to submit them. And when we are taking a look at that actual application though, of course we have a couple different things we're gonna look at. As far as that academic achievement portion, of course, we're looking for students that are making strong grades in challenging courses, beginning your first semester of high school. So mostly A's and B's, mostly A's is what we're looking for. But of course, that's not all. So we'll take things like your individual story and your background and opportunities into consideration, as well as any accomplishments or involvement, anything you do outside of the classroom, whether it be um, club sports or maybe just personal hobbies. Make sure you put down anything and everything on this application so we have all the information that we need to make sure we're reviewing you, not just as a student, but overall as an individual. So that's something you're going to want to keep in mind. But of course, that was a super short and sweet version of who we are as a campus. But of course, if you guys have any questions, feel free to go ahead and throw those things in the chat. And I'll be around here at the end for further questions. Awesome. Thank you so much. Next up, we have University of California, Berkeley. All right. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great start to the weekend. Um, my name is Jua Howard. I am an assistant director in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at UC Berkeley. I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm going to take a few moments, uh, like my colleagues, to let you know a little bit about what you see, how what makes UC Berkeley a very special place and how it may be a really special, perfect fit for you. All right, so we are a four-year public institution, and we are the flagship campus for the University of California system, which includes nine campuses in total. You see all of us reflected here on, uh, on this particular uh, slide. Um, one of the best things about Berkeley, in my opinion, is definitely the location. We are located in Northern California, about 20 minutes outside of San Francisco. You can see the skyline from our campus. Um, we're also very near Oakland, not too far from uh, Silicon Valley, San Jose region, and also not that far from the Napa Valley area and Lake Tahoe area. So you're very centrally located to take advantage of a lot of resources, whether that's for internships, research, jobs, really good food. Uh, the Bay Area has really a lot to offer you, and our, take, and our students take really full advantage of that. Now, our undergraduate population is composed of over 31,000 undergraduate students, and that's representing all 50 states, U.S. territories, around 100 different countries. So we are a very global community. We also have an additional 11,000 graduate level students. So we are a large campus, but that puts you all at about 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So 70% of your classes will still be 30 students or less. So we keep it very manageable for access. And our diversity on campus is pretty broad, not only ethnic and racial diversity, but you also see here just for our freshman class this year, 76% came from public schools, 22% were first generation college students, over 20 plus languages spoken. So again, we're always striving to do better and add to the diversity and the richness of our student population at Berkeley. Now, our undergraduate academic programs um, are it's pretty dense. We have over 150 different majors and minors split between five colleges and one school. 
our largest college being the College of Letters and Science. That is about 75% of our students. That's where they're located. That's everything from majors in your arts and humanities, biological sciences, physical sciences and mathematics, your social sciences, and also interdisciplinary study majors. So that's everything from English and philosophy to Spanish, astrophysics, political science, American studies, and so on. You can even create your own major. So you have a lot of options. But we also have our College of Chemistry, one of the only colleges in the nation dedicated to that discipline. We've added around 16 elements to the periodic table. So that's one of our strong suits. We also have our College of Engineering, one of the best in the United States, and it's our most competitive program to be admitted to. Environmental design this is where we have like architecture, natural resources, focused on more your environmental science focused programs, and then the School of Business, Haas, second oldest business school in the United States, excellent reputation. What I always advise is guide.berkeley.edu is our online academic guide. Take a little time, explore. It'll give you a chance to really learn more about all of our different academic programs that, you know, to see what may um, pique your interest. We're also a research one institution, a lot of funding for research, whether it's independent and or working with faculty and staff. The undergrad research apprenticeship program, your app is a great example. You can apply as a freshman and allows you a chance to work with faculty one on one. And you could be a philosophy major, you could be a physics major and be a part of this program. We also offer study abroad programs in over 40 countries and over 100 different programs. And one of the benefits of being part of the University of California system is you actually can go through other UC campuses programs as well. That opens you all up to around 300 different programs. In addition, the Berkeley community is vibrant. We have a lot going on. We're, we're very, I would say, electric type of feel on campus. We have over 1,200 student groups and organizations that you can tap into, um, whether it be academic, performing arts, volunteer. Greek life is there. We're also Division One in athletics, part of the Pac-12 conference. You've got sports clubs and intramural sports. So you have a wide variety of what you can do with your time on Berkeley, in addition to just going to class. And then coming to Berkeley is very important. We're very much focused on trying to be as affordable po as possible for our students. Need-based aid is based strictly through the FAFSA. So I will suggest please visit our website for financial aid and scholarships office to learn more about different opportunities for need-based aid and merit-based scholarships. But one important thing I always stress is that the Berkeley brand is global and it will benefit you. That is one reason 80% of our students are graduating going directly into grad school or into a job opportunity. In addition, you become part of a global alumni network that includes over a half a million alumni throughout 39 different countries in addition to the United States. And they are very integral in what we do. So they will support you as an undergraduate student and definitely once you leave our campus. Finally, some quick things about admissions. We are practice a holistic admissions process. So we're looking at everything in your application in context of where you go to school. A couple of years ago, our testing policy changed. We are test free, meaning that we do not consider the SAT or ACT at all. And that's an indefinite change so that there's no date in mind where we may go back. So we do not need your SAT and ACT. Our application is the UC application shared by all nine UC campuses. It is online. It is strictly self-reported information. And we do offer fee waivers that you'll be notified of while you're filling out the application. If you qualify, you can apply up to four campuses for free. And really quickly, for the letters of recommendation, Berkeley, we have to request them from you. You cannot just send them. So please know that. All right. I don't like want you doing extra work if you don't have to. Now, for my seniors, you all have until November 30th to apply. Um, that deadline is just one deadline, no early action, no early decision, nothing binding. We will notify you at the end of March if you, if you are admitted and you have until May 1st to say yes or no. We have a lot of great ways for you to stay in contact with us. I'll put some links in the chat, but we're online. We love communicating with you all on social media. So hopefully you will continue learning more about UC Berkeley and thinking considering us is one of your options. Thank you all so much. I will uh, turn it over to my colleague to tell you about their institution. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Next up is Drew University. Hello, everybody. My name is Mary Maurer, and I am one of the admissions counselors here at Drew University. Um, I will start off by sharing a little bit about our institution here at Drew. We are a small private liberal arts institution in Madison, New Jersey. We are one hour outside of New York City. One of my favorite parts about Drew is our location. So 
because being in the town of Madison, there is tons to do in the town of Madison. It is a quaint, charming college town with tons of shops and restaurants. Also, fun fact, it's also ranked the safest college town in New Jersey and the third safest college town in the United States. Um, about our community, as I mentioned, we are a small private liberal arts institution with about 1,700 undergrads on campus. So what that means is that you're gonna have smaller class sizes. Our average class size is about 17 students per class. So you're really going to have the opportunity to get to know your professors and your professors are going to know you as well. More times than not, if you ask a student their favorite thing about Drew, that is usually what they'll say. They love to have that opportunity to connect with their professors and not just be a number. We do have some of our most popular majors here at Drew. Our biggest majors are business, psychology, theater arts, political science is also extremely popular as well. Um, and here at Drew, we really wanna make sure that you're not only succeeding in the classroom, but also you're succeeding outside of the classroom as well. So with that being said, we wanna provide you with opportunities to immerse yourself in the surrounding areas. So it is required that you do complete three immersive experiences before you even graduate from Drew. So those immersive experiences can be study abroad opportunities, different internships, and um, we're also known for our research program for any science majors. We have a research program here at Drew called RISE, and it is actually ran by retired alum who have opened up a lab on campus to allow students like yourselves to conduct, to conduct research with them. In addition to that, we also have in New York City semesters, I would say one thing to really note about Drew is these New York City semesters definitely help us stand out. Um, as I mentioned, we're one hour outside of New York City, so we do have a train line that goes directly into the city um, and students can have their semesters in the city. We have a United Nations semester, a Wall Street semester, we also have a theater arts semester and a cultural management semester as well. Another thing that I would like to point out is that we really do want to make sure that you graduate with a network of mentors. So as I mentioned, you're really going to have the opportunity to get to know your professors. They're not only going to serve as your professors, but also your mentors. So they're going to help you transition from Drew into the real world, maybe land that postgraduate internship or your first job out of college. We also wanna make sure that we're connecting you with alum as well. So we do have a variety of networking opportunities for students. Um, every year we have one in New York City where we invite all of our alumni in the area to connect with students like yourselves. Another thing to note is that we really wanna make sure that you are creating an amazing community at Drew. So a fun fact about us, we are very residential. We have 90% of our student body actually do reside on campus. But if you do choose to commute, of course, we have lovely spaces for commuters as well to hang out between campus or between classes. In addition to that, we also have tons of clubs and organizations, over 90 plus clubs, organizations, um, for you to be involved in. As I mentioned, we have tons of events that are going on on campus to really make sure that we're creating that strong campus community for you. We have an entire service dedicated to student engagement to really make sure that they're creating that fun environment for you as you transition from high school to college. And um, we also are NCAA Division Three. We actually have 24. We have two additional sports that have been added this year. We now have men's and women's volleyball. So we do compete at the Division Three level. And next year, we're actually adding track and field as well. As far as the application process goes, you can apply through the Common App or Coalition App as well. And you know, we'll need your transcript, your essays, your letters of rec, and we do also offer I an mean, interview option for you as well. Um, and of course, we are test optional too, and we will be remaining test optional. A little bit about our deadlines here. As we know, the November 1st deadline recently passed for early decision, but we do have early action coming up on December 1st. We have early decision two as well, January 15th, and regular decision February 1st. 
In addition to that, 85% of our students receive some sort of grants or scholarships. So Drew is known to be one of the top 10 affordable schools um, in the area. We also offer a variety of early estimates for financial aid and merit-based scholarship awards too. So if you have any juniors on the call, this would be something good for you to do um, come summertime if you wanna get an estimate of what your merit-based scholarship would be or financial aid award. But I know I mentioned we do offer merit-based scholarships that range anywhere from $50,000 to $27,000 per year based on your academic performance. And we also have three additional um, scholarships that you can apply for, including our Baldwin Honors Scholarship, our Drew Action Scholars, and our Scholarship for the Arts. We have a list of our upcoming events here. And that's really everything for me. So I appreciate your time and listening to me. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. All right, next up is the University of Kentucky. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, so here at the University of Kentucky, we are a relatively large institution. Um, we are Division I in sports in the Southeastern Conference, um, and we are a Research I institution when it comes to our academics, and so there's a lot of various ways to get involved. We're located in Lexington, Kentucky, um, and we have a population of about 31,000 students, and about two-thirds of those students, so just over 20,000, are working on their undergraduate um, degrees. Um, and we just welcomed in our largest freshman class of about 6,100 students this past year. So we're continuously growing. Um, we're really, really proud of that fact. And we have a lot of various programs to offer to our students to ensure that they're getting what they need as far as their programs go. So over 200 different majors, um, 16 to one average student to faculty ratio, and about 85% of our classes have 50 or fewer students. Now, when you're starting off taking your general education or your core classes, you'll probably be in some larger sized um, auditorium style classrooms, but the more you get into your programs, those classes tend to get a lot smaller. Um, and we also offer various tutoring centers and academic centers for our students, writing center, research hub, all sorts of things to make sure that our students have what they need. Um, for students that may be undecided on what they want to major or minor in, we have exploratory studies options, uh, academic and career advising to help kind of narrow down those interests, and then education abroad in over 70 different countries. And so these highlight the 16 different academic colleges that we have, as well as the Lewis Honors College. So if you are interested in a smaller class size and a more uh, a smaller cohort of students that are kind of working on similar interests with you, we do have Lewis Honors. Um, but depending on what it is you choose to major or minor in, you will be housed under one of these various different schools um, or several if you choose to do major and minor across different areas, that's certainly up to you. We also have pre-professional tracks, so pre-law, um, pre-physical therapy, um, pre-medicine, pre-dentistry, pre-vet. We have a lot of different programs for students that are interested in continuing their education after undergrad. And we like to think of ourselves as well as a place where dreams are made possible. Um, we have a ton of different internships and co-op postings, so about 10,000 on our campus, job posting, career fairs. There's a lot of different ways for students to get internships. Um, and about 90% of our students do some sort of internship and or study abroad while they are in their undergraduate career. And so that's something that we're very proud of as well, because we know it's not just about learning within the classroom, but learning outside of the classroom as well and getting that hands on experience. So there's a lot of ways to do that at our institution. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we are a Division One school, so sports are um, kind of a big thing at the University of Kentucky. It's a really great way to get involved if you're looking for that larger style atmosphere. Um, but there are various student organizations as well. So we use a platform called BB Involved that highlights our student organizations. You all can actually access this right now if you're interested in seeing what we have going on. Um, but we have over 550 different organizations on our campus. And again, that's something that's always growing as students you know, are continuing to develop their interests. And so if you Google UKY BB Involved that's up there at the top, you can 
certainly see um, kind of what we have going on, but there's grief life. There are professional clubs, religious clubs and organizations, all sorts of things to make um, university feel like home. And so that's something that I really stress to my students, especially if you are um, a minority student. So if you are underrepresented on our campus, we are a predominantly white institution. So this is a great way to find your community um, to make a large campus feel small for any student. So getting involved is key. So in order to apply, um, we do have a $50 application fee that we can get waived that you, your, um, your council will just have to fill out a form for us. We do require your official transcript um, and we also require um, your ACT scores um, and SAT scores that are test optional. And so we'll be test optional until at least, at least the year 2025. So you don't have to send us those scores, um, but you can if you want to. And sometimes there is an appeal in sending those. And so what we're looking at in our holistic review process are your, your, your GPA, of course, um, your test scores if you send them to us, how hard your coursework was, but also the way that you write your essays, your leadership roles, community service awards and recognitions, um, all of those things. So anything that you participated in as a high school student, that's really going to speak to, um, you know, how passionate you are about your dreams, how much you are willing to put into your um, your goals. And so we want to see all of those things. So it's not the time to be humble. Be sure to speak to your interests and your involvement. One date that I really, really want to highlight for you all is December 1st. So that is the early action deadline for admission. That is also the deadline for our scholarships. Um, and so you want to get that application in, even if you're just considering UK by December 1st. You have, as you see at the bottom, until May 1st to actually confirm with us by signing up for orientation. But if you want to be considered for our scholarships, um, December 1st is going to be the deadline for you to do so. Um, so some scholarships, as you can see, are academic and some are going to be competitive. So the top one, the Bluegrass Spirit, that is one of our best out-of-state scholarships. And that one, um, is it kicks in automatically as long as you meet the criteria and you have applied by December 1st. Uh, we have test optional and traditional criteria, depending on what your strengths are, so you can kind of choose what's the best way for you, um, but sending a test score to us is never going to harm you. If anything, it'll only bump you up, but it will never bring you down. And so just finishing up here, I wanted to highlight my information to make sure you all have it. Feel free to reach out to me at any point with questions that you have or also to drop them into the chat. This is a very quick snapshot of our university like the other schools can probably say as well, um, but I would love to speak with you more about what we have to offer at UK. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right, next up is Furman University. Good afternoon, everyone. It is so good to be here with you. My name is Madeline Leach. I'm one of our admissions counselors at Furman University. We are located in beautiful Greenville, South Carolina. We were founded in 1826. That makes us the 64th oldest university in the United States, and we have a 750-acre campus. If you all are able to visit us at any point, we would absolutely love to have you on our beautiful campus and to come and explore Greenville a little bit as well. As far as where our student body is coming from, geographically, we are a fairly diverse institution. We have 49 states represented, so we're just missing a few there, and 69% of our student body is coming from outside of South Carolina. So students have the opportunity to meet each other who are coming from all over the place, which makes a really fun experience for them. We also have 29 countries represented as well. So we have some wonderful international students who come and study with us. Our student body is composed of 2,500 students. We are on the bigger side of small, as we like to say. We're not teeny tiny, but we're not medium size either. We're right in the middle there. Our student body tends to really enjoy this size because you can come on board with us and start to recognize faces around campus pretty quickly from your hall, from your classes, and really start to build your community in that way. But at the same time, there's always a new person to meet, a new friend to make, a new club 
have to join. So you can really start to hone in on your community very quickly, as well as start to expand that out once you get comfortable and kind of get your feet under you. Community is really, really important to us at Furman. And we definitely believe that having a bit of a smaller student body helps students find their community and find their people and have an amazing four years. We have a nine to one student to faculty ratio. We are able to maintain that with having a smaller student body. We have great professors who love that they're able to teach at a smaller student body. And so with that, we have a lot of office hours, a lot of academic resources. So any kind of support that our students need, we're really able to provide that for them. Our average class size is 14. We intentionally keep that on the smaller side. There's a great accountability piece there as well. When you walk into class, your professor knows you and your name and where you're from and what you wanna study, but they also notice if you're kind of sneaking in late every day and they'll uh, you know, check up on you and make sure that everything is okay. We cap our classes at 35. So our students are never in a class that's larger than 35. We're very, very intentional about that. So if you're someone who likes a little bit of that smaller, more intimate learning environment, definitely give us a look, come visit us if you are able. Um, and we would love to have you explore and see if Furman might be a great fit for you. The Furman Advantage is what we offer to our students when they come on board with us. For starters, it's a personalized four-year pathway to graduation. Every student's pathway is going to look very unique as they go throughout their four years. And part of the way we do this is through high impact engaged learning experiences, which is our way of saying we offer research internship opportunities and study away opportunities. About 92% of our students are participating in at least one of those things, if not more than one. And we have really great offices on campus to help students get set up with every single one of those things, uh, regardless of major, minor. We have a lot of resources to make sure that students are able to add one of those things to their curriculum while they're studying with us at Furman. Advising and mentorship is also a really big piece of life at Furman. Every student is assigned an academic advisor when they come on board. They're also assigned an academic advisor that is major specific when they declare their major during their sophomore year. We also launch a program called Pathways, which sets students up with a cohort of first year and second year students they also have another mentor in that class, as well as a peer mentor. So we have a ton of mentorship and advising available at Furman, and we'd love for students to take advantage of that as they are figuring out their path and those four years. We have four different institutes on campus that any student can be involved with. They focus on sustainability, politics, business, and entrepreneurship, and health and community health so if you're interested in any one of those things, students are able to be involved with those institutes, regardless of what their major or minor is. Again, we want the student experience to be very tailored, and having four different institutes on campus is one way that we are able to achieve that. Talking a little bit about student life, we are 100% residential, so students live on campus for all four years. We like to say your housing matures with you. First year, you're in a dorm style setup, and then you move on to a suite style, then you are in an apartment. We are a D1 school. We're one of the smaller D1 schools out there, but we are D1, so we have a really great school spirit. And we have 167 clubs and organizations. So those span a really wide range. Our student body tends to be really, really involved. And we want students to come and learn great things, but also connect with their community in that way as well. Very quickly, in our last few seconds here, here are our dates and deadlines. We have early decision one and two. Those are only different by those dates. Early action is December 1st, so definitely keep that at the back of your mind as that date is approaching and regular decision as well. Thank you all so much. I appreciate your time today. Thank you. All right, and St. Vincent College is up next. Hello, everybody. My name is Molly Henderson. I'm trying to share my screen for you guys. I'm just linking you to our website right now. Um, my name is Molly Henderson. I'm the Assistant Director of Admission uh, at St. Vincent College. We are a small private institution in Latro, Pennsylvania. So 
if we're looking at a map, we're looking at uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're about 45 minutes southeast of the city of Pittsburgh. Latrobe itself is a small community. About 8,000 people live in the town. There's shopping, restaurants, things to do inside and out of the community. Uh, and that's one thing St. Vincent is really well known for. When I say small, we're about 1,500 students. Average class size is about 25. It's a 16 to one faculty to student ratio, or student to faculty ratio. Sorry, I reversed that. Um, but there are a lot of ways to get involved with campus. We are division three sports. So we are competitive, not as competitive as D2 or D1. We really focus on our academics. When it comes to academics, we have about 90 plus majors and minors that you can focus on. Uh, we are split up into three different ways, the school of business, sciences and humanities. So big popular majors for us are anything in the pre-medical field, um, pre-law, criminology, that's a big one, um, as well as uh, computer science is huge, education. So there's a little bit of everything. I recommend you to get on our website and see what it is that we have for you available, if that's something you're interested in. When it comes to getting involved on campus, like I said, we are Division Three sports. We have a list of sports that are available for you. Uh, if that's something you want to do, not everybody wants to play sports in college. So we have about 50 clubs and organizations and other ways to get involved. Most of our students will get involved with some type of internship, whether or not it's in our local community or your local community. The career service office here is really good about helping you get good internships, which obviously lead you into graduate school or to getting a job. That's big and popular here as well. Uh, when our students do graduate, 98% uh, of our students, when they graduate, either have a full-time job within six months of graduating or are into graduate school. That's a big number. Uh, it's something we're, we really pride for or about. Um, when it comes to the local community, we're very involved. So we try to get our students into volunteering, uh, getting involved on different ways to, hey, come check out the local area. We're not close to, or we're not far from Pittsburgh. Come and see what we have to offer that we can kind of link the colleges together and or, hey, oh, I'm going to see this game because our school's playing this school. Uh, we're right down the school from uh, Green, well, we're right down the road, I guess, from Greensburg, and there's three colleges out there, and that's kind of something that I always thought about when I was from this local area, and now that I'm back, that's something I always consider. Uh, different ways to get involved that way. We do have an honors program that when we review applications, and I'll talk about that in a second, but um, we, when we look at students' applications, we see if they should be uh, hey, I recommend them to apply for the honors program. That's something that they can do. We do have a study abroad program. There's different ways to students to get involved all over. The application process is simple for us. Uh, it's a free application either on our website or we use the common application. So either way, whatever is easier for you. We are test optional. So I would need your high school transcripts. And I'll look at those. I want to see what kind of classes you're taking in those last four years. Honors, AP, um, any dual enrollment classes are important. IB, depending on where you're going to school, those are important to us. And we kind of come up with a little checklist of things that we look at when we're reviewing applications. We go through those and we review. We usually review pretty much daily or every other day. Um, and we review those online. So when we review, we can kind of put you through. There's a portal online where you can log on and, and see your status. If we need anything, we'll let you know, hey, we need your high school transcripts. You can send in your test scores, but it's not required. If you do send it, that's fine. It's not going to hurt you either way. But when I'm reviewing files, I kind of look on that to see um, for your scholarship purposes, and we put that in there, and then 
uh, my bosses approve on that. So we kind of go from there, but those are things that I would definitely need. There are different ways to visit our campus. And honestly, I just have you linked to our website because there's so many different opportunities and ways to look on there. But we offer students to come and visit anytime throughout the week. We have some open houses coming up and then obviously in the future, but those are different ways to get involved. One thing, especially if you're a little farther away, is to get on our website. You can schedule a virtual tour. And that's where one of our students will get on there, give you a tour, and you can meet with myself, a faculty member, and we can get you all squared away. But definitely check us out. I'm going to send on uh, the chat my link and my contact information on the way. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. All righty. I would love to welcome everybody back onto the screen so we can go through and hear from you all one more time. Um, and then as everybody's jumping back on, I am going to post, uh, send out in the chat, uh, there's the drawing for the live scholarship and prize, uh, the KEL chapter YouTube page at one o'clock Eastern. So um, the channel is there and wanted to send that out. All right. Um, I'm going to ask Molly, do you mind stopping sharing? Is that okay? That's okay. No worries. I just want to be able to see everybody. Um, all right, as she's doing that, I'm going to pose a question here for you. So um, what advice would you give, you know, a student who's going to go through the admissions process either now or in the near future? Uh, we're going to back, uh, bump up to North Carolina State University one more time. Yeah, definitely. So definitely one piece of advice I would give is that you can definitely utilize any of us because our goal isn't just to make sure you get into our universities. Our goal is to make sure you get wherever you want to go in life. So if you were to come and sit into my office, of course, I want you to try to come to NC State. But if that's not in the plans for you right now, that's fine. We're also going to go ahead and help you find out exactly wherever you need to go. So make sure you're utilizing any, if not all of us, for that point. Thank you. University of California, Berkeley. Yeah, something I always stress to students is that throughout this entire process, to give yourselves grace, um, you are not going to know everything in one day. You're not going to know everything overnight. It is a continuous process, a process of learning. And so I think if you give yourself grace in understanding that, you will learn quite a bit. Um, you will actually enjoy the process and hopefully they'll keep down the stress levels. So give yourself some grace in this process as you continue to learn and figure out where you may decide to go um, uh, for college. Thank you. Jury University? I think those are, are all great um, pieces of advice. And I always like to say your admissions counselors are truly here to help. So please, please reach out to us. That's why we're doing this job because we love helping all of you. But in addition to that, I would say visit the campuses and not only once, go more than once, go to different events that, um, that the different universities offer because it's super helpful to see colleges and universities in different light, because maybe going to a campus tour might totally give you a different feel than an open house. And you'll be able to meet different members of the community who can really help you in your decision with where you wanna end up. So that's my little piece of advice for all of you. Thank you. Uh, University of Kentucky. I think my advice um, would be one to stay on top of your deadlines because scholarships are available, but you do need to stay on top of those timelines for those. Um, and studies have shown that students are gravitating more towards colleges that are a better financial fit than anything else, which is understandable. Um, so stay on top of those deadlines and also be real with yourself about what it is you're looking for in your college experience. Because if you know that a larger university isn't necessarily the thing for you, if you've always thrived in smaller class sizes, then you should probably look for smaller class sizes um, and that type of option. Sorry, I'm wrestling my cat. But yeah, that would be um, the two main pieces that I would offer. Awesome, thank you. Furman University? I echo everything that has been said. If you all have a opportunity to connect with your admissions counselor in an interview or over Zoom in a one-on-one -on -one setting, we love meeting you. It is normally the best part of our day. And when we read your application, it's so helpful to put a face to a name and that shows that you're really interested in the university. So if you have the opportunity, I would highly encourage you to take advantage of that. Great, thank you. And St. Vincent College. 
Yeah, absolutely. Everything that everyone has said is great. Uh, definitely visiting campus is, is great. And keep, a, uh, I guess, in mind of the deadlines. Our college is rolling admission, so I never really push on that. But when it comes to scholarships, that money goes away quick. So um, keep in mind, we're here to help you guys out. So reach out to us and definitely visit campus, even if it's an online visit before a real visit, a face-to-face -face visit. So keep that in mind. Awesome. Very good advice. Thank you all. Uh, all right. So I am going to wrap things up here for us. So thank you to our presenters for putting all this information together. Um, and being here and to our participants as well. We really, um, this was a great session. Uh, we, when you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick survey. We do appreciate any feedback you can provide. Um, so that's it for sessions today, but all of them have been recorded. So if you wanna go back and watch one again, or if you weren't able to see them, um, all the recordings will be available at strivescan.com slash alpha. Um, and then there is the live scholarship and prize drawing uh, happening at one o'clock uh, Eastern. So feel free to jump into that. And uh, that's it for us. Thanks so much and have a great rest of the day.